Hi, this is LJ Bothell with a Microsoft Excel video on if functions and nested functions. Now an if function is basically uh, programming that asks a question and if the answer is yes, something happens and if the answer is no, then something else happens. So in human terms, it's like if um, you flip on the switch for your coffee machine. And if electrical current is running, if yes, the electrical current is running, the, the coffee machine will start working and you'll be able to have some coffee. And if the electrical current is not running, then no, you will not have coffee machines start working and you will not have coffee. So it's, it's, it's that sort of thing. So in Excel, we're going to explore this by looking at this column of this little table to determine if Joa, age 26, is an elder. If he is, and basically um, the criteria is going to be age of 64 or greater, or you know, greater than 64. So if Joa is older than 64, then yes, he's an elder. Otherwise, no, he's not an elder. So let's go in and create the function using the if. So I'm going to click the um, function, insert function icon by the formula bar. And then I'm going to type in if to go search for that in the library. Double click it to open it. And we need to put in a logical test. Now the logical test has actually got to be based on a piece of data. So I need to look at something and then ask if something about that is true. And then I need to give a value if it is true, an answer, and a value if it's not true, if it's false. So the logical test will be here for cell B36, age. If the age is greater than 64, the value is true is yes. Because if it's true, then what you're going to get is um, the word yes put in. And if the value is not true, then you're going to get no. And when we look at how this is working, once I hit enter, basically if the age um, over here in cell B36 is greater than 64, well, that happens to be false. It's, he's 26. So since it's false, um, if the value was true, it would be yes, but the value is false, so it would be no, and this is why we get this answer no. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to copy this formula down and see if using the referential, you know, ref reference, relative referencing of the cells that are in column B if it works properly. So I'm going to paste, and here we go. So Trinity is age 32 and is not an elder. Scott is 74 and is an elder. Julio is 64 and is not an elder because the criteria is to be greater than the age of 64. So that's how you get an if-then. I'm going to save this. Now things are going to get a little bit more interesting because we have to ask multiple questions and, and have multiple responses. That's what a nested function is. So for instance, I go to my coffee um, pot and I want to make coffee. So is there coffee in the filter? If yes, turn on coffee pot, start making coffee. If no, stop. Then the next question is, do I have coffee to put into the coffee filter? If yes, put the coffee in the coffee filter. If no, stop. Next question is, do I know where I can find some coffee to put in the coffee filter? If yes, find the coffee and put it in the coffee filter so I can start the machine. Else, no, stop. And if I have to stop, then it was like, go to Starbucks. <laughs> so that's kind of, you know, the decision making. If this is true, do this. Otherwise, if it's not true, then ask this question. And if this is true, do this. And if that's not true, then ask another question, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we spend our lives doing that. Well, we have to figure out how to tell Excel how to do it. It's basically a little bit of programming in terms of how you think. 
So here, what we need to do in this field for generation, we want to find out if a person is um, has been born between 1965 and 1980. And if they have, then they're Generation X, and that should go in this field. If they haven't, then we need to ask, have they been born between 1981 and 1996? And if so, then put the word millennial in this field. And if that's not true, then let's just stop asking questions and just put the words other generation in here. So we're asking two questions. Are they between this age range or this age group or uh, uh, birth years, then Gen X? Otherwise, are they between this range of birth years? And if yes, then millennial. Otherwise, if no, type another generation. So that's what we're going to do. Now in Excel, you have to do an if then sort of thing, but you have to do it twice or more. In this case, we also need to note that this argument, if a cell, if this year is greater than this and less than this, then do this. So we need to use a sub function called an and function. And then after we get to that and realize, well, you know, no, this person doesn't fall in there. So we have to ask another if then type of question, we need to do another and argument, which is, well, if, if they're not Gen X, then is the birth year between this and or greater than this and less than this? Then if yes, type in millennial. Otherwise, just type in other generation. So that's how this works. So this is the, the actual you know, protocol to typing it in. The bold is the if and the opening and closing parentheses which you start your first and argument, is this between this year and this year? If so, this response. Otherwise, ask another question. Is this between this year and this other year? Then give a response. And if that, if it's no, then give this final response. So this is kind of what we're going to have to look at here. It's broken down even more. This is why this is considered a lot more of an advanced function. And for people who do coding and programming, this is probably easy. But for folks who this for, for whom coding and programming is not part of their life, we're getting a taste of it, and then that's all. Don't worry, I won't actually ask you this in another assignment. <laughs> but let's give this a try and see what we can do. So I'm going to go into this cell. I'm going to go in and insert a function, and I'm going to do the if then um, if again. And in here, I need to do a logical test. Now, note here, the word if is already up here. So the function is already starting the function with the if up, up here in the upper left corner. So I don't have to type if something here. What I have to do is type what the logical test that goes with if. And that will be the and argument. And the and argument needs to be written a certain way. So I've got this down here, and I'm just going to be lazy, and if I can, can I type this in? No, I can't. So I'm going to, and that's not going to make any good. So I'm going to type in parentheses. And in the parentheses, I need to do an and. And the and needs to look at two ranges of information. So that needs to go into parentheses. And within that, I need to look at cell D36. Is cell D36 greater than 1965, comma? And is cell D36 less than 1980? So that's a good thing. Okay. Now, I'm not sure I need this additional parentheses right here. Because we are going to this is this is going to be where it gets a little complex. We're going to just continue on as if we don't need that second parenthesis right here that, that closes the whole thing. So we're going to say we've got this. So this, if the value is true, gen x. If the value is false, then we need to start 
doing another if and. Next, we have to do the value if this is false. Now, one thing I also want to note is that that makes this so trying for someone who doesn't do a lot of programming. I noted um, a, a couple minutes ago that if is already here. Well, in a sense, whether we realize it or not, the parentheses that go around this whole thing are not showing here, but they exist. So this if is already started with a starter parenthesis when you see the full formula out there, which is why I'm not having to start a parenthesis right here. And it also will affect how many parentheses I put at the bottom here. What does that mean? Because basically you need if, and then you need the parentheses, blah, 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 blah. And if you're going to have additional blah, blah, blahs in there, you have to have sub parentheses and sub parentheses and all of that. So one of the things that Excel doesn't explicitly tell you is that when you're building a function here, the opening and closing parentheses will be supplied by Excel for the initial if argument, not for the second one that we're doing, but for the first one. So now what I need to do, so right down here, for instance, when we're looking, I thought I was going to need to put a parenthesis in front of the word and, and it doesn't need to be here because this is intuitively put in by Excel, as is the closing parenthesis in this final line down here. So now what I need to do is start a new if and statement that does need all of its parentheses. We're going to do if, we're going to start with an opening parenthesis for and, and then another opening parenthesis for typing in the D36 is greater than 1981, comma, and D36 is less than 1996. And then we're going to close that parenthesis and put a comma after it. If, and this is the argument, then the next thing you do is, if that is true, put in the word millennial. Let me try to spell it right. And comma. And if it's not true, put in the word other generation closing quote mark, and then because I started this with an a, a parenthesis before the and, I need to close this whole phrase with another parenthesis. Now, see what's happening. It, 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 none of this really calculates properly until you finish typing. Now, basically here, D36, if D36 falls within this range, then do this. Well, right now, Excel has already determined that this is false. So since it's false, then it's going to start looking in here for another formula or decision. And the decision is that if, if it's true, type millennial. And if it's false, type other generation. So the response is going to be other generation. Does this stretch your brain the way it stretches mine? Even as an instructor, it still is tough. So now what I want to do is copy this down. And there we go. So, you know, this is so that you could be exposed to this. I am really not trying to stress you out with nested functions. This is a beginning to intermediate course, and you're kind of getting a taste of several things. And this is one of those things that if you really like programming, you'll love doing this sort of thing because you've already trained your brain to think of if, then this, then that, do this, then don't do that, and blah, blah, blah. But if this is just not your cup of tea, I wouldn't worry about it. This is something that if you need to take advanced Excel for more of this to maybe get into advanced data analytics or something, that's a different matter. But for here, you know, this is just a taste of it. Try to work through it. Try to have some fun with it. But if, it, if it's just not your cup of tea, you're exposed to it, but you don't need to be an expert. So don't worry. This isn't going to be on the final. This, this nested thing is not going to be on the final. It's not going to be a test item. It's not something you have to stress over.
So anyway, um, that is what I have for you. I hope that this was interesting and informative for you, and I appreciate you sticking through the video.